Hey, what's up guys? So today I wanna to talk to you guys about these very interesting super 35 millimeter lenses that DZO was kind enough to send out for us to try out. These are the Pictor Zoom. In fact, we're actually using one right now to record the A-roll. The one that you are seeing right here is the 20 to 55 millimeter focal range. And the one that you see here is the 50 to 125. You can actually buy these in a set. They're very affordable and that's actually what got me very interested in these lenses. And we've actually been testing these out. My friend, cinematographer Lucas Colombo, has actually been using this for his short film documentary about homelessness in Los Angeles. Additionally, we were able to go down in Huntington Beach and test these lenses out with our friend Paul Collar, who's a DP and also a surfer. And he happens to have a friend who's a surfboard shaper. And we were able to get some really interesting shots with these lenses. Now, what makes these lenses special is their price point. For Cine Zoom lenses that offer everything these do, is almost unheard of. You can pick each of them up for about $2,500 or you can buy them as a bundle for $4,500. And that basically covers you from 20 millimeters all the way to 125. Now you're gonna get T28 constant, so it doesn't matter what focal range, but here is like the cherry on top. These are parfocal. What that means, if you're not familiar with that word is, right now I am at 50 millimeters. And if I focus on my subject, if I go, let's say for example, to 125, my subject will still remain in focus. That is not the case with many lenses out there, especially photo lenses. So if you have a 24 to 70, and let's say you go to 24 millimeters, you focus on your subject, and then you decide to go to 70 millimeters, your subject is now out of focus. Now where these parfocal lenses actually came in really handy was when we were filming Chris, the surfboard shaper, inside his workshop. Chris is an artist and we wanted to be more behind the scenes, almost blend into the walls because he's doing things that are very meticulous, are happening really fast, and being able to go from a wide to a medium to a tight shot without having to refocus and keeping up with Chris's pace was actually very ideal in this production. In addition, we rarely swapped out lenses because we had coverage all the way from 20 millimeters to 125, which basically covered everything that we needed. So I'm here with my DP, Paul. We're working on a short film project, and this is the first time you've used these lenses, yes. and I kind of wanted to get his thoughts. So what do you think so far? They look great, and I normally use prime lenses, and I've never been against zoom lenses, just something I've always liked using prime lenses, but one of the few things that I do like about these lenses is the parfocal. When we were just in the room filming some of the dust and the loud noises, you can go from 50 to 125 without having to refocus, which is great when you're running gunning and you're trying to get those different shots, close-ups, wides, it's just, it's been great. Now something that really impressed me with these lenses is there's literally no focus breathing. Now there's a particular shot that I remember when Paul was filming Chris, he had a little leveler to make sure that the surfboard was straight. And I remember he was rack focusing from the little bubble leveler to his eyes and there was literally no focus breathing, which was awesome. Something else that I like is we were using a follow focus and these lenses actually line up exactly the same. So if you're using a focus iris and zoom motor, you won't have to readjust whenever you're swapping lenses. Now, as I mentioned, these lenses are made for super 35 millimeter cameras. However, I did want to use my Canon C500 Mark II, which is a full frame camera, but it does have a super 35 millimeter mode. But when I did mount these lenses and I put it to full frame, I did notice that there was very little vignetting, which tells me that the coverage of these lenses is actually wider than super 35 millimeters. So if you're using a camera like the Red Komodo, which is technically a super 35 millimeter camera, but it's on the wider side, you should have no problems using these lenses. I think what really impressed me was the image quality. I know a lot of people add like a black promise, pearlescent filter on top to kind of smoothen it out, but there's just something about this lens that is just so creamy. It kind of reminds me of the Helios vintage lens, but even better than that, I don't know, I can't really put my finger to it, but when you see the image, you'll understand what I mean.
So I think you can see for yourself, the image quality coming from this lens is pretty impressive. I would think that because of the price point that maybe they're gonna skimp somewhere and they actually didn't, I couldn't find a flaw. And even little things, like if you get the EF version, they actually throw in the PL adapter that you can actually install in minutes. Something else is they have a lens support for added security. It's just those small little details that you would think at already this price point, they would just strip away. And I really feel that these lenses are ideal for run and gun, documentary, style filmmaking. And if you have a camera like the C200, a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, Ursa Mini Pro, or even a Z Cam, I really feel that these lenses would pair very nicely. If you guys wanna learn more about the DZO Pictor zoom lenses, I'm gonna leave more information linked down below. My name is Armando, thanks again for watching, and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.